Here are five signs someone was sent to you by God. And if you haven't heard, there's only two more days to get a free AGW University course with the purchase of my new book, Christ Center Dating, Pursuing a Relationship that Glorifies God. It's available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook formats. If you wanna please the Lord in your relationships, I believe this book will really help you. For more details about this book and the free bonus course, you can go down to the description of this video to learn more. Number one, if the internal external and eternal signs align. When you really want to know what God is saying, the word you want to remember is confirmation. It's not enough to just have internal, external, or eternal signs. You need all of these to align to really know if someone is sent to you by God. So what do I mean by the terms internal, external, and eternal signs from God? By internal signs, I mean those things you should sense in your heart and mind. This includes the voice of God, but it also includes things like your personal preferences and desires. Romantic relationships are biblical options, but not commands. So it is biblical to only choose romance when you want this with someone. By external signs, I mean those things which should be tangible, observable, and objective, meaning it's true regardless of how you feel about it. This is where the other person would need to show you with their actions that they feel the same way as you do and that they are who you perceived them to be. By eternal signs, I mean those things which could only have been planned by God. When you force a relationship to happen, it's not of God. Of course, you will need to put in effort, but when God sends someone to you and God is sending you to that person, it won't be like trying to knock down a brick wall with a rubber mallet. When God is present, he will remove the barriers and bring the growth that is needed for the relationship to be truly biblical. Number two, if God's word, the Holy Spirit, and the circumstances all align. God uses all three of these as means of communication to us. The Bible is of first importance when hearing God because it is his absolute truth in black lettering on white pages. In other words, it's very clear. You can never say God is silent when your Bible is open. The Holy Spirit also speaks to us in very clear ways in our hearts, but we are not so good at hearing him clearly. Sometimes we mishear his voice when really it's our own voice or the pleas of competing desires. God will say things to you, but he will not say things to you that contradict scripture or the external circumstances. If you hear something that is contrary to God's word or something that never happens in reality, the Holy Spirit didn't say it because the Holy Spirit never lies. Lastly, we need to look at the facts in our external circumstances. It doesn't matter what you feel is going to happen. It matters what actually is happening or will happen. It's dangerous to live in your mind so deeply that you believe your thoughts and feelings more than reality. That's not biblical faith, that's blind faith. Number three, if this person and you align spiritually. I'm talking to Christians. I'm talking to people who want to please God. I'm talking to people who don't just want to be in a relationship. They want to be in a relationship that is glorifying to the Lord and enjoyable for themselves. Never date someone as though they are a fixer-upper. This isn't a real estate investment. Never date someone because of their potential. If you want a partner in life, then choose someone who's prepared to be your partner, not your project. You can't ignore God's laws about love and then blame God when you don't experience true love. So never compromise on the spiritual qualities in yourself and in the person you decide to be in a relationship with. Neither of you will be perfect, but you both should be equally yoked together. Number four, if this person and you align practically. One biblical category that is extremely helpful but often forgotten with relationships is wisdom. When there is not a clear command telling you exactly what to do, or you don't have a strong sense of the Spirit's leading in your heart, the Bible calls us to use wisdom. What makes sense? What does logic say about this relationship? Are you two so incompatible that this relationship is just a pipe dream? Do you live on the opposite ends of the world, and despite your prayers and efforts, there does not seem to be any way to meet this person? Do you have conflicting future goals? Or is there more congruency in your lives than and incongruency. Are your personality traits compatible enough for you to actually enjoy each other when the puppy love wears off? Are your prayers and efforts resulting in you two connecting more deeply in a mature way that would make sense for a real relationship? Do you both have similar goals in life, thus making a good team? God uses wisdom to lead his people. When someone is truly sent by God, 
the relationship will make sense. And number five, if this person and you align emotionally. While you must start with the spiritual objective qualities required in God's word, and then look at the practical qualities externally, you also must look at the subjective qualities you desire in your heart. Why? Because this is what the word of God requires of you when it comes to romance. For example, throughout 1 Corinthians 7, Paul makes clear that singleness is best for those who don't desire marriage. And marriage is best for those who do desire marriage. Therefore, when you apply these principles to your own life, you should subjectively want to be with this person in an emotional and practical way. And if you're someone who wants a deep, Bible study on how to glorify God through your relationships. And as you seek to meet, date, and marry the person God has for you, I wrote this new book specifically for you. And if you want a free bonus course from AGW University called 10 Steps to Meet the One with the purchase of this book, there's only two more days to capitalize on this offer. You can go down to the description of this video to learn more. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. Until next time, God bless.